Great, cool. Okay, it's going lovely. So, uh, hello everyone. Um, we're back with another uh, Q and A type deal. This time with our audio team in uh, in London. Uh, they're called Skillbard. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Vincent. Hey, I'm Tom. And hi, I'm I'm Joe, the intern. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, we we just have like a bunch of questions and stuff to talk about. Um, I guess the first one is, what did you do before Skillbard, everyone? Um, so I um, was working on a lot of short films and documentaries um, as a composer. And for my day job, I was working at a bunch of different film companies doing like film admin type jobs. It's um, a film admin job. Uh, I was doing a lot of casting for documentaries oh, and, and also some adverts as well. Um, and being a researcher in documentaries, stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, I was working on my portfolio as a composer. And you yeah, been full time for about doing six years. Research now. Stuff? Um, not really, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just love writing music for films and games and yeah. stuff. And Vince, you used to work at record labels, right? Yeah. Uh, this is how I met Tom, actually. Oh, yeah. That, 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 uh, that was our, our next question. How, how did you meet? Uh, well, I was but... running this record label, and I wanted to release an album by a band whose name I'm sure Tom doesn't want me to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. Uh, they're called Munch Munch, and they're fantastic. That's um, great. And so that's how I met Tom. It's his, it was his band. Uh, but oh, that's it didn't great. Work out, actually, we didn't release them in the end. <clears throat> and that was well, Low Records, started. right? Uh, yeah, Low, L-O. L-O. Joe, um, what were you doing before Skillbard? Um, I was a student uh, studying animation. Oh, right. Actually, yeah. And uh, in my final year, I was working on a, a, a film uh, and realized I didn't want to be an animator. <laughs> and uh, I'd already sort of been playing around with sound and music and stuff in my teens. And I approached Vincent on Twitter because we were like, I think, Twitter friends or something at that point. And uh, yeah, he kind of got me in on a nice. kind of helper list and yeah, just been nice. helping them out on and off. Yeah. And Vince, Joe's not did actually you... an intern, by the way. She's, <laughs> she's the newest member, but she's, yeah. uh, she's far more than an intern. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you also, um, Vince and Tom, do you do any visual arts? Um, Vincent does a fair bit, but yeah, I'm just Sonic. I don't do any visual stuff. My my mind doesn't really work that way. It's pure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm unpure. Um, this is how um, Jeremy and I started following each other on Twitter, actually, because I was doing visuals for Clark. Um, mm -hmm. um, I was doing oscilloscope stuff, which is actually quite relevant to this project a little bit. Yeah. Although I haven't been pitching in with that, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we found each, each other on Twitter from the chat video of you pumping oh, the car. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they tweeted like, oh, thanks to, to Vincent for doing this car thing. And I was like, oh, I'm going to follow Vincent because we don't get behind the scenes on this band I really like. <laughs> That you followed me back and yeah. then you bugged me for like two years. <laughs> like, hey, if you need sound. Well, I mean, <laughs> you were telling me, <laughs> send me an email in two months. So then I did. I know. Yeah, you're right. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. actually just hounding you. I know. <laughs> Give me so in demand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we started like looking for sound designers, and Evan went and made a list of like, oh, here's all my favorite animations with great sound. And they were all by Skillbard. And I was like, wait a minute. That's the guy who's been bugging me on Twitter for the past year. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> it's all came together. I don't, I don't know why um, I knew I wanted to be involved with this game. Because it was just, it was like four frames. Like it's just a GIF you posted yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't know. It seemed special somehow, even though it was super simple. Well, thanks. Yeah, you, but you were just like, yeah, I really like... Uh, um, Sun Ra and stuff, and you're like, oh, okay, cool, great, perfect. You understand our yeah. inspiration and stuff. Yeah. 
so where did the, the the story behind the Skillbart name is is a pretty good one. Oh, you want to go into that? Yeah. yeah. Um, I sort of I really regret that I've stuck us with this actually, because, <laughs> because the word skill is in it. <laughs> um, and also bard, because it kind of suggests yeah, uh, it's just so a medieval uh, fantasy, yeah. thing, which I don't really mind. Yeah, that bit's cool. Um, but it's actually just a man's name. Um, I went to uh, the Welcome Collection in London, uh, where we are, um, and there was a, an exhibition about skin diseases and such. And, <laughs> and the first thing I saw was a, a little video from the 70s or 60s even, I think, about rashes. Um, <laughs> and the director was Oswald Skillbard. Uh, <laughs> and my name was name. already in use at the time. so. When I started doing uh, animation music stuff, I I just took that. Perfect. I mean, I, I I didn't just take it. I actually Googled really heavily to try and. Yeah, that's what I would have done. I would have been person. like, "Who's this guy?" Yeah. <laughs> did did, did um, you ever find it? it was, no, it, it's a it's a yeah. Google whack. Wow. So that's uh, that's something. It's us now. There you go. And now Vincent doesn't really use the name Oswald Skillbird. Um, yeah, but we've kind of kept, yeah, yeah, but we've kind of kept this character mm -hmm. um, as this kind of other person who is involved with the company who we can kind of pretend to be if we want to. Right. Yeah, it's it's Oswald who chases the invoices and stuff. Or <laughs> he does the yeah. <laughs> the he does the That's it, yeah, I saw at the beginning I got a few emails from Oswald Skillbird. I was trying to figure <laughs> out what was going on here. Yeah. But that was just me at the time. Yeah. Like, now I'm Vincent Secret Skillbar. Vincent's alter, alter ego. So this yeah. is a way to like avoid taxes. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now you're the family right. Skillbard. Yeah. What, is, what, what do you think Oswald Skillbard looks like? Like, does he have a top hat? <laughs> I think he's got yeah. a fedora. Mm. Mm. But he's Scandinavian, surely. Oh, of course. <laughs> so uh, maybe not a top hat. Mm -hmm. I like that it sounds Scandinavian. Yeah. So I thought it was yeah. to do with the, the island Svalbard. Oh. I, I asked yeah. you about that and I said, no. <clears throat> no. He no. makes music for the That's seed vault that they have there. Yeah. The, the eternal <laughs> storage of, of plants. And he's just there playing music for the plants so that they grow better. It's his job. Yeah, the music for plants. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it all started. <laughs> we have actually been working on uh, like the Skillbard lore. Oh, nice. Story. And um, I can't remember much of it actually. It's been a little while since we since we talked about it. But there is an island that's based on Svalbard. That's a bit like Greenland or something, which is where the name Skillbard comes from. That's the name of the island. It's fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be an animation someday. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Lovely. Yeah, we're talking to. So, you, how uh, did you guys? When, when did you guys know that you wanted to do audio stuff? I know Joe mentions. Um, after cut, like while he was working on this animation, um, you were like, "Oh, I like this audio stuff better." Mm. Um, but like, well, what, what was some of like your first experiences with making audio and like figuring out that this was a cool thing to do? Well, for me, like a lot of people, it was a really slow realization that I could do music for games. Um, I just fell in love with music as a teenager, like a lot of people do playing guitar mm -hmm. and then just really, really slowly finding out through articles and the internet and stuff that you can do music for film, that you can do music for games. Mm -hmm. And then just very slowly asking friends who are filmmakers if I could score their short films. Um, and just very, very slowly, you know, over the last like 15 years, like building up what I do now. So it wasn't like a bolt of lightning thing where it's just like, I've seen this thing and I want to do this now. I don't think so. I think it was lots of little seeds mm -hmm. all kind of culminating in something that I'm really, really confident that I am super interested in now. What about you, Vince? Um, well, I hadn't either ever imagined I would be doing this sort of thing. Um, but then... I did make my own music and then it got released by this label and then I started running the label and the uh, the graphic designers who did everything at the label uh, called Non-Format. Yeah, they're um, pretty great. 
yeah they're amazing um they started doing moving image stuff and they asked me to make some music for that and i did and i just i uh, i found it much easier than making music for myself because there was a deadline right and i could sort of relinquish some like my personal ego and stuff like that um so I, I so it was a bit of a bolt of lightning for me then and they were so supportive as well that's um, great. so i was like okay this is what i'm doing now and joe you, you mentioned messing around with audio stuff in high school what, what was that like Oh, it's mainly because of um, art classes, mm. and I did. A, we did a, had a great art department at my the secondary school, high school. That's pretty. Um, that's that's got to be pretty great because I mean we didn't really do any like sound art in high school. Like we had only done like jazz band and orchestra and stuff. Right. Yeah. Mm. We never did anything like that either. But um, uh, did a lot of moving image. So I did like the films and animations, um, whatever I wanted basically. But I, I always okay. needed. I needed to put sound to it. Right. So I just did it myself um, mm -hmm. and kind of learned that way. And I, you know, was in a crappy band like yeah. a lot of people would. Um, but it was a time when you could get a fair bit of kit um, as a bunch of kids yeah. um, and play around. And um, yeah, it was like something you could actually do and engage in. So you kind of passively learn things. Um, yeah, I feel like the best way, like when I learned music, I, I learned so much more being in bands than I ever did, like just practicing with myself. Mm -hmm. so that was always yeah, a fun definitely. experience. What other questions I got here? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you, you guys have all played games for a fair bit of time. At least I know, I know Joe and Tom. And it's an, are, are you, you a, a big gamer? I'm not much a bit, very big gamer actually. No, um, I think uh, through this I've learned uh, a lot more indie games and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. I'm um, getting into again. But uh, since I was young, I haven't really, haven't really been gaming. What are some of y'all's favorite audio moments in in games? I think I used to play a game Sorry. at a friend's house. <clears throat> so was, um called Shadow of the Beast. Mm -hmm. um, um the game isn't good. Um, <laughs> I, I was like nine or something like that, and the music had a really big impact on me. Um okay. I forgot everything about I forgot its name and, and everything like that. And for years I was sort of casually Googling it occasionally if I remembered something. Yeah, and it's an Amiga like, game. Yeah, yeah, I was I was really young. Um or was I? Oh, and one day I googled like purple man punches crickets or something like that. <laughs> and I saw an image of it and I found the name and I searched for the soundtrack and it's really good. It stands up. It sounds like uh sounds like the knife a little bit. Yeah, I was oh, gonna say crazy. fever ray. Oh wow. Um it's a while. That's a good yeah. one. Um so I'm 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 pretty chuffed I found that again actually. I still listen to it quite a lot. That's great. What about you, Tom? Um, the big games for me growing up were um, LucasArts adventure games, um, and I've just always really loved the music for Day of the Tentacle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mainly just Day of the Tentacle is the one I keep going back to. And Those, those guys were, were pioneers of interactive yeah. music. They made the, yeah. the iMuse system. Yeah, um, and finding out about that is, is really great. Um, and I'm not sure because because I often play it through Scum VM. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's actually emulating the um, yeah it is. system. Oh, it is cool. Yeah, it's um, it 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 always uses that as like the MIDI data that it plays back, but the actual audio that you hear depends on what the emulation uses. So it's like ad lib support or like a bunch of sound cards you can pick from. Okay, um, yeah, that emulates depending on what the instruments are. But yeah, they have like a patent for that. It was like the first like really interactive music system where it was like like what we do in FMOD now where there's like okay we, we can transition on certain bars and stuff like that mm. Um, mm. I, th I think I read that they massively regretted starting to do that because it was it really took a lot of work they said yeah it paid it off made, I think. 
mm. it made them have to write a lot more music. <laughs> mm. But what yeah, the score for that's so good. Like three different people collaborating, and each yeah. each person scores one timeline, one time zone, yeah, and it all just idea. works together so well. Was that that was Peter McConnell and who else? Forget um, Michael Landon. Yeah. Uh, Clint. Bajakian? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, Peter McConnell, Michael Lee, and Clint Bajakian, yeah. And Peter McConnell went on to do Grim Fandango, which is yeah. one of my favorite game soundtrack memories. Because um, it was like, oh, there's, there's real jazz music in games now. So I was like in jazz band, and I was like, I'm also really into games, and there's no intersection of the two. So remember that was the first like oh there's like real instruments and they played it and there's like improvisation and it's like i, I could like, take this to my dad and he'd be like oh when, when was this made 1970. <laughs> it's like no it's in this game <laughs> yeah so well done it's really yeah. impressive what about you joe for the game i'm muted oh yeah okay yeah uh, definitely music wise probably a bit of a boring answer but the pokemon uh mm -hmm. games are totally like that that is um what springs to mind like especially the kind of the the the, the, the boss music the gym leader mm -hmm. music and the elite four music and the kind of more amped up themes i still love to do something like that um my friend actually went and like he like made up a fake pokemon game and like soundtrack and like wrote an album for it yeah it was, like, a concept. <laughs> crazy with that yeah what's that but, like, oh i forget the guy's name is maxo um M -A -X -O. Oh, yeah yeah his music's great yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, I forget, there's a couple people who do the, the music for that, but they're all, um, he, Max actually tweeted at the composer, he was like, check out this fake Pokemon music I made, and, and the guy replied, and he's like, oh, it's really great. <laughs> and he was just so thrilled. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Yeah, right? Yeah. But as for like a, a sound world, I think another um thing that always comes to mind is this which we've talked about the spore games mm. we, oh, wait, yeah. maybe i haven't i don't know yeah no the, I, i'm not i'm not up on this the, uh, the spore the the it's by uh, it's a will Wright game yeah yeah yeah, the, developed, the, yeah. The thing, maxis the or, thing. Yeah. yeah i think as a kind of the, the way the soundtrack intertwines with the effects mm. um it all feels very coherent and it has it has that kind of uh, uh that brian Eno. Mm -hmm. um Generative music, I guess. Yeah, he, he worked on it, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, I wonder how much that cost. <laughs> yeah, I know. Big game. Yeah, you just come off like the Windows 95 score. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I remember, I remember like finding this one track that I really liked from it uh, on YouTube that the composer had uploaded. And this composer was set to do the, um, I can't remember their name. They were set to do, I think, the, the entire game. And then Brian Eno came along and it was like, no, sorry, we're doing, you know, you're off. Yeah. You can do this one song, but like, <laughs> it's like, fair enough, I guess, you know. Yeah, it's Brian like, it is Brian Eno. I mean, you can't, um, you know, you can't say I, you're better I've been than watching, Brian Eno. Um, I've been watching Top Boy recently. And I just, it's, um, it's kind of like a crime. Um, it's, it's really good, actually. It's a bit like The Wire, I guess, mm. um, but it's like a UK. Um, but they've just done a new series, um, well, last year. But um, I found out that Brian Eno did all the music to that. Oh, wow. And I never I never realized. I like, hmm. He's a busy man. Yeah. yeah. He gets around. Evan, what, what, what's, what's your favorite game audio memory? Um, well, there's there's a couple that come to mind. My, my favorite game soundtracks are uh, the Portal 2 soundtrack. I don't know if you have you listened to it. It's like all these super glitchy, yeah, kind of sounds that is very creative and I don't know, I, wonderful. Um, oh, cool! I played the game, but I, I don't remember. I need to go back and listen. I think I think they released them for free. Um, they're they're great. Um, I also really love um, the the soundtrack of Sam Roast and. Oh yeah, Tunicula. All all the Amita design games mm -hmm. have such. Yeah, they're either done by Floex or Uva, and they're just like so charming. Um, mm -hmm. Like it just 
the audio in those games, like the, the visuals are already so charming, but the audio just makes it such like a wonderful world to inhabit. Very memorable stuff. Yeah. Um, and then most recently, I was really impressed by um, Cur Return of the Obra Dinn. Like this, the sound design and music in that is just, it paints such a picture. And I think it's such a testament to how like audio is more than half of the experience. Um, For storytelling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, Cause like, if you're not familiar with the game, it, it takes place like all these little flashbacks. And when you enter a flashback, it starts on black with just audio playing and some, no I think some simple text. Yeah, no spoilers, but. It's on my wish list. Mm -hmm. It just paints the scene with the audio because of the limitations. This was a game made by one guy. Um, and he he did a phenomenal job with the the sound design, and and then once once the the scene plays out, then you actually explore the environment, um, and then you kind of like uh, can see all the like all the events that you heard. Um, so it's this like really great um, sequence where you're, like your imagination is really on overdrive. Um, yeah, because it's just, it's just a black and it's just like an, an audio, like, like a, a radio play kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it goes from like no visuals, but incredibly rich audio to like a sim simple like music and then very rich visuals. So, um, so like, yeah, you, it's, it's a great rhythm. I just, I really loved how bold the music choices were in that game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like that very like repetitive, minimal, um, so like a, re a repeating drum playing when mm -hmm. that when you're kind of following the um, mm -hmm. the kind of ghostly the trail uh, thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to spill stuff, but yeah, the music in that is, is really really bold and great choices. Uh, yeah, it, re it definitely left an impression on me. Cool. Um, let's see what else. I got, oh yeah. So what is some of the worst or least useful bits of instructions or feedback that we've given you so far? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Where to start? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the most annoying thing that we've asked you to do. <laughs> I don't actually know. You first. It's, it's pretty dreamy working with you fellas. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I feel like we have very, I don't know, like you guys just now like hit it out of the park immediately. So we don't generally yeah, exactly. tend to like yell at you and be like, do it this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the thing is, yeah, we you... it every time. So <laughs> don't need to worry about feedback. <laughs> yeah, just you guys give really good feedback and you don't micromanage. Um, it's yeah. been a dream, really. Mm. I don't have time to micromanage. <laughs> yeah. I micromanage animation. <laughs> yeah. Mr. I spent one hour giving Pedro feedback <laughs> while I was trying to fix the Perforce server an hour ago. Oh, on the subject of time, I guess the most annoying feedback has been, yeah, that would be far too complicated and we don't have time for that. Yeah. That's a lot of that. And then we sort of dial it back again. Yeah. yeah. But that's as bad as it's. As, as yeah, I mean, there's process. a lot of like like fun ideas. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but just like stuff that would be like conceptually really cool to have in a game, but would be just straight up hell to actually make on our end. Yeah. Um, but it's not like they're bad ideas or anything. It's just like, yeah, this isn't technically feasible because of all these reasons that are really weird and complicated. <laughs> Um, but what, so, so what's something that, that you wished you had known when you started this project? Oh, I think so I wish, um, that I was more confident that it would sound good. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're, we were writing for a very long time without have, having done the live recordings. Mm -hmm. So we're writing using virtual software instruments. Right. And spending ages tweaking them, like knowing that we were gonna replace them, but just being like, this doesn't sound good. This sounds really mechanical and 
plasticky and we want it to breathe and sound like a live jazz band um and kind of overcomplicating things and adding way too many layers because you want it to sound good um and once you actually record the live musicians they bring so much nuance and expression and um and humanity that you find you can be a lot more minimal um and a lot more effective with simple ideas and uh, that would just result in just nuking the, the old like the previous samples of entirely yeah mm -hmm. and and brick stripping back layers that we didn't actually need um once you you have an amazing sax sax player mm -hmm. shredding on on the piece some sometimes that's all you need mm -hmm. no we really did that's such a good sax player yeah really like i remember you you were like just sending us clips of um of the live performance and we were just really amazed at how good it all sounded it just sounds so it just fits really well in in the whole the whole thing hmm. Yeah, and he, he really got our references when we were talking about Sun Ra and oh, great. Aaron Sanders and yeah. Coltrane and mm -hmm. yeah, straight off the bat, he, he can do anything. Is Josh Arcolio? Yeah, Josh yeah, Arcolio. Name? Yeah, Arcolio. Yeah, check him out, guys. I hope that I can come and visit London at some point and meet all the musicians. <laughs> Just be like, yeah. "Hi, yeah. I'm the one who made this thing." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone was really interested in the game. Okay. Um, a lot of people who weren't gamers or in the game world and had mainly worked on film projects when they when they were doing session and just explaining to them the concepts of the games it was really um some people were really digging it and was really inspiring for some of them oh that's great yeah it's a shame though that we had to do each of them separately mm -hmm. it would have been nice to get all the the music organized and then everyone in the room at the same time mm -hmm. and play like a live jazz band but it's it just for other Ellen, for, El, for other ludo Nericon content our publisher suggested oh we, we, we could get the band together and like play a show mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like uh that's not really a thing that we can do <laughs> nah. give us like i don't know how much money that would cost but yeah probably a lot <laughs> a lot of money <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all shit hot musicians. <laughs> I'm yeah, it, it was also. Race. Sorry? No, no, Union race. Continue. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I was just going to say um, another thing that um, would have been nice to have them all in the room and not have them performing to a click track mm. because uh, we found we once we had everything set up in FMOD, we needed to keep stuff at a constant tempo in order to loop stuff and have things yeah. change on the beats. Um, I mean, you could do it with a variable tempo, but it would have a, it would create a huge amount of work. Um, but yeah, just to have things like really breathe have, as a live group playing together without a click track, mm -hmm. that would be like the ideal musical way to do it. How I don't know if that lets you. Uh, I know you can like specify tempo markers wherever you want, but I don't know if you can like give a tempo curve or anything. I don't think you can in the version we have, but yeah. you can change the tempo on every beat. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah, that's what you like to, Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Are there other differences between uh, like conducting or directing musicians to pro perform for like a game soundtrack versus? Uh, like a, a linear animation that's going to play straight through? Um, we found that we it just multiplied the number of cues we had. Um, and we just had to think about lots of little tiny bits for each person mm -hmm. and keep on keep tracking all of those cues and just get people to just play like one bar of one note sometimes. Mm -hmm. like really gr granular getting down to the nitty gritty mm. um whereas more linear stuff we found you can record bigger chunks um mm -hmm. and also get more people together at once um more easily sounds good how many cues we recorded 
got like 200. Oh, yeah, there go. yeah, it's oh, it's filtered. How many? 227. Wow. Um, there'd be, you know, full takes and more mics. And... Yeah. Yeah. The, like, how do you guys pick which mics to use? I've never understood that process. Like, <laughs> hearing what a different mic sounds like. Like, I can hear like the difference between that weird soup can one you guys had and like a normal one, but I can't hear the difference between like a a ribbing mic or a normal mic or whatever else. How do you figure that out? Um, well, actually, because we we never had um, much time, we, mm. we we basically just guessed what which mic would sound better, and then put all of them up. Um, like on the saxophone, for example, we had five mics. I think is that right, mm. Tom? And mm. like, to, was it five channels or five mics? I think it five, was because there were some stereo setups. One stereo mic setup, oh, but not the figure way, actually. But anyway, uh, yeah, we've just put everything up, and mm. then later we choose which. Um, and it's mostly positioning that may, that okay. determines the the difference in sound. But um, yeah, basically, mics just do sound different. <laughs> um, uh, don't need to go into too much into detail about that. I don't think. Did you like the soup can sound? Oh, the yeah. Mic, the, the soup can yeah. mic? <laughs> um, didn't know how it was going to turn out, but for the saxophone, um, it's it was really great, actually. It's it's really honky. Mm. <laughs> oh, really put, puts the shank on it. <laughs> Thank you, mics. I hope we should put that as a feature for our yeah. game. Really honky. Thank you, sax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's not it's yeah. not useful everywhere. Actually, another reason we put so many mics on wasn't just because we didn't have time to see how they sound and stuff. It was because we're covering quite a lot of different um, uh, styles mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, the, so they, the different mics account for that different range as well. Gotcha. But the soup can very rarely would be mixed in. And sometimes for, say, the trumpet, we were recording like one mic really on axis and one slightly off axis for a slightly smoother, slightly more mellow sound. So sometimes when you want to really kind of shred and have it like very intense, then you want a different sound from say a more kind of exploring pastoral level where you might want it a bit more mellow in the background or. Makes sense. Cool. So I'll I'll wrap up with uh, the last question, which is what 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 bleh, what are you all listening to these days, music wise, in your in your spare time? Um, I'm going through a bit of a guitar phase. Um, been listening to Glenn Branca. Oh yeah. And um, going through some Sonic Youth albums that I hadn't listened to before. I really need to listen to more Sonic Youth. They're really great. I like their guitar technique and the weirdness of it. Mm. Uh, Lee Ronaldo has a great um, video on YouTube where he just like shows a whole bunch of stuff in his studio. Um, oh yeah, I think I've seen that. And it, yeah, it's just like thirty minutes of just like weird stuff. And like here's this busted old guitar. And <laughs> it's got lots of like little amps that are, yeah records a lot of tiny that. amps. Yeah, yeah, he's just really charming to watch though. What about um, you, Tom? I mean, not Tom Pence. Um, I don't listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> What's music? I don't know what music is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, I don't really. I mean, when we're not making music, right? And, um, sleeping or something. <laughs> but uh, we've got like a, a big playlist of references, mm. um, like Sun Ra and Alice Coltrane and on Cherry and stuff. And that's been one of the the bigger joys uh, of working on the game, I think, actually, okay. um, getting more intimate with Sun Ra particularly, because uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know much, too much about him before. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. What about you, Joe? Just relevant stuff. <laughs> uh, just the stuff I always listen to. Uh, this is like a big Elvis Costello year, for sure. Nice. Oh, cool. I listen to all the friggin' time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely the top most listened to for me. 
What about you, Evan? Uh, I was getting back into Tristan Tristan Pritch. Parrish, yeah. Parrish, uh, who Jeremy took me to an amazing concert um, a couple years back, and I was just reminded of it because we're going to be on a panel for Ludo and Nericon about storytelling without dialogue. And um, yeah, this this concert was like in, really incredible because it was a it was a collaboration between um, between live percussionists, which was it was okay. Or what's the so percussion? I think. So percussion, yeah, and um, and a computer that uh, Tristan set up. So the computer was like sequencing and controlling the live performances and um so like turning on different audio channels for the different musicians and uh yeah it was just a great experience because effort like i don't know if other people got this but to me like with the lighting that they had going on and the computer sequencing this audio it, it like kind of told the story where first these mu human mu musicians were playing and then this computer started to like manipulate them and control them and uh like until it became un unfamiliar as like as analog instruments being played and then eventually it kind of like resolved into a harmony between this machine that's like coordinating or conducting these musicians and the, like the warmth of the like the, the analog instruments so it was just like this beautiful experience of like feeling like the ai is like gonna gonna destroy us and be like oh no maybe it'll be all right <laughs> so uh, sounds yeah. amazing. what's the name tristan parrot t i yeah. uh, let me get t tristan parrot t-e-r-i-c-h uh, he's, -E he's most famous for creating a one-bit orchestra like in a he like made C -C cd cases and then you put a little, a little chip chip in. In. yeah with the little speaker. Cool. So it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. I have a copy. It's just like this clear CD case with wires in it. It's great. Um, and it's like it's like contemporary classical music, but it's also chip tune music at the same time. Yeah. It sounds like a, a it sounds like Steve Reich writing music on a Nintendo. It's it's, it's great. Cool. You have to send me a link. That sounds yeah, amazing. Well, well, cool. Uh, that's that's all I got. And what are you listening to, Jeremy? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing soundtrack. Cool. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I got Animal Crossing soundtrack. I got. Uh, that's all I got up right now. Just a bunch of YouTube videos of Animal Crossing soundtrack. <laughs> cool. It's just so relaxing. Hmm. I wish I could play a video again. about Animal Crossing um sound effects mm. was it with you tom uh yeah yeah you linked me to it um yeah it was, it was, like, um, it, it was very nice but it was like animal crossing does this amazing thing that makes you so immersed in um in the world of animal crossing and stuff and it's like a 10 minute video but it's just foley it just talking right. about recording sounds <laughs> <laughs> It's not, 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 not unimpressive to a professional audio guy. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that it's unimpressive. It's just that's totally standard. Literally every game mm. does that. <laughs> right. I'm not. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a lovely game. <laughs> it is. <laughs> cool. Uh, so thanks for chatting with us. And, thanks uh, for having we'll us. let you guys get some sleep. I assume it's pretty late there. Mm -hmm. It's oh, quarter to 10. ten. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Uh, have a good weekend, and we'll chat to you later. Cool. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 See ya.